G'day gang, this is a bonus test episode. We recorded it not knowing if you would hear it or not. Um, but as a result, uh, my audio isn't the best, but I think it's still a pretty good episode, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, this was done while we were trying to decide if we should switch podcast uh, um, systems. So uh, we were trialing a lot of new tech with this episode, but I think it turned out pretty good, and it's why we made a change. So, yeah, enjoy. On this bonus episode, we discuss the eyes of Tammy Faye, Jackass Forever, Don't Breathe To, Night Teeth, Wrath of Man, Old, and Home Sweet Home Alone. All this and more on upcoming attractions. gang and welcome back to upcoming attractions what is this episode oh um this is a yeah this is a test we're, we're testing out some new tech um where today we're trying a new a new way of doing episodes so maybe you'll see this maybe you won't um and literally five minutes ago we we're like well what is there to talk about and i was like I've got a list of films we keep saying we're going to cover but haven't covered or they're too old to do now or whatever. So we're going to smash this gauntlet style and just one after another see what we can do. We may not get through all of them, but uh, yeah, shall we shall, shall we begin, my friends? We shall. Yes, all right. let's do it. So also I should preface a lot of these films, we have some of them we've seen pretty recently, some of them we haven't seen in – maybe six months so <laughs> this might be a challenge for people to remember so we'll see how we go uh let's kick things off with uh adrian you saw eyes of tammy Faye. we were meant to record this a couple of months ago but never got around yes. um tell us your thoughts on eyes of tammy Faye. so the eyes of tammy Faye was a film that a friend of ours collectively uh, brought over to watch and I never really had the intent to but I'm so glad that I did because it was amazing um, the the story it's based on a true story about a couple uh, from the 1970s who are sort of uh, like Hillsong-esque idols okay. in the Christian Christian community in the states um, and they became legendary and sort of became I think they sort of they catapulted like Christian TV into the mainstream and um yeah it was nuts they became like they were worth hundreds of millions of dollars like by today's standards i'm pretty sure and uh tammy faye baker was actually quite an amazing person despite a lot of corruption that ended up surrounding them mostly because of her husband jim uh but she actually had wanted to give um a voice to people suffering uh, in the LGBTQI plus community, which is very controversial, um, obviously, being so religious. But, um, yeah, she was amazing. Uh, She's played by Jessica Chastain, who I believe could easily be handed the Best Actress Oscar for her portrayal. She was explosive in this film. She was just an acting powerhouse. You see her go from, I think, about um, her l- end of her teens up until her death in the film. So she plays her throughout her whole life pretty much. And it's just a an acting Olympics for her. And Andrew Garfield is really amazing in it as well. He is, oh, I don't know, they, they, they really bring all of the – the corrupted parts of themselves out in their performances, but also make you see who they are just on a human level. And it's a story that I never thought I would really enjoy or go out of my way to see, but I'm, I am so happy I did. And I actually think if you appreciate acting at all, then you will enjoy this film. Damn. That's uh, mm. high praise. Uh, pull it up mm. here. Um, eyes of The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Currently nominated for Best Actress and Best Makeup and Hairstyling at the yes. 94th Academy Awards. Um, wow, that sounds that sounds 
Mm. Sounds heavy. It's, Religi- religion's always a heavy subject. So. It's mm. you know what it it is heavy, but it's not heavy in a way that you're going to leave it feeling like you just ran a marathon. You sort mm. of go through it feeling like you lived their lives with them. Um, I don't know. He the director as well, uh, Michael Showalter. He did the Big Sick, which is really really awesome, and I feel like he carries a very similar tone in this film as well. If you enjoyed the big sick, big sick, incredible film. Love the big mm. sick. What was that one again? I can't even remember the big that sick. That was, um, Kumail Nanjiani from, uh, now Eternals fame. Uh, that was kind of his big breakout role. I think he, Oh yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I know the one. Yeah. But he's been he around did. for ages in the comedy circuit. And, but yeah, it's, it's based on a true story that happened with him and his wife who is also in the industry, where they just started dating and almost straight away she gets a terminal illness and he stays with her. Um, and he sort of just, like, meets the family and, and just a really weird way of, like, unusual, sorry, unusual way of getting to know someone while they're pretty much in a coma or bedridden or whatever for the majority of that period. Um but yeah, it's a really powerful film. So yeah, that's the eyes of Tammy Faye. Looking forward mm. to seeing it sometime. Yeah. Good luck at the Oscars. Uh, <laughs> ne- speaking of Oscar-nominated films, uh, this film, you know, not nominated for the Oscars, but maybe it should be uh, Jackass Forever. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering uh, where you were going with that. <laughs> yeah. Look, I've been meaning to see this so bad. I've got a, a group of friends. I've been telling telling them I'll see it with them. It just hasn't happened, and that's why we haven't done it on the podcast yet. We keep putting it off. But uh, mm. Jesse, you've seen it. Um, yes. Tell me, what is there to say about Jackass that hasn't already been said? I guess. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't really have heaps to say about it. Um, you like, know, it's going like to be how like the character arts, and... the, the, the plot driven. You know. Oh uh, well, you know, the story is really good. Yeah. The story is really good. Uh, I loved some of the character arcs. There was a twist at the end. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, it, like, look, it, you know, it's Jackass, of course. It's going to be entertaining and fun. They bring it all once again. Um, and this time there's a whole bunch of new people uh, in the cast. So it's a, there's like a group of younger people. And then there's like, you, you know, Johnny Knoxville, Steve O, uh, you know, just the original guys. Um, and yeah, like, it, it was really good. I, I wouldn't say the stunts would probably as extreme as the past three movies like there's some that are still really extreme um but i wouldn't say they're as extreme i guess which is fine they still do really crazy shit i mean steve and johnny knoxville got (laughs) hurt the worst on this film compared to any of the other movies are there any that stand out that you remember that you just went like your jaw dropped the skits or Mm, the the stunts um, well, Johnny Knoxville did a bull stunt in this, and a, apparently I read he, they weren't actually going to do like because he's done a bull stunt in every single Sorry, Jackass movie. when you say bull stunt, do you mean like testicle balls or like no, no, B U no, 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 B U double L. Oh, bull! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know how every every you know how every episode, sorry, movie, uh Johnny Knoxville does a bull stunt. Um. Yeah, they weren't actually gonna, they they weren't actually going to do one for this movie, and then they did, like decided last minute, ah oh, no, fuck it, we we'll just because they were they're going to do what they want to do something with a wild animal, and they're just like, well, may as well just go over bull again, and he got like just completely like he got whacked, and he did like a like a backflip, and he just Ooh. broke a whole bunch of bones. He got brain damage from it. Uh, oh my god, pretty pretty gnarly. Um, so he got hurt the worst out of any Jackass film on this movie, and so did Stevo. Uh, but it's great. I loved it. I love seeing the guys. <laughs> most of the most of the new, yeah, like I don't know. They're just something like there's a you like seeing them get hurt, but at the same time, there's like this really nice camaraderie between them. That's really yeah. nice and sweet. Yeah. They're like you know we're just a, a bunch of you know really close friends and uh, just having a bit of fun and um, and and the new the new people were great. You know they they like some of them were a bit at, outshine the others. Um, some of them I thought were a bit brought their A game a lot more than the others did. But overall, really good, really fun film. Um, yeah, I just Do like, you feel I don't like really... the new cast, are they set up to sort of replace them? Like is it a passing the torch sort of thing or they just a little join? bit. Well a little bit. I think they've said, well, if we want to continue doing this, the new cast is going to be the ones that kind of take over. They don't they don't definitely say, oh, you know, there's going to be 
another Jackass movie or, or series or whatever. But I think it's like if that does happen in the future, then I've, I've got a feeling that these new cars mm-hmm. will be the ones that can primarily uh, uh, take over. And um, yeah. yeah, I'm just trying to think. There's a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of penis <laughs> and uh, <laughs> testicles. Nice. Like that's that's like, what we're paying for. That's why I pay the big no, bucks. For. But like, there's more penis and testicles in this <laughs> Jackass movie than any other Jackass movie. Like almost like every few skits, someone will just have their dick out, and <laughs> it would be something to do with their dick. The skit will revolve around a dick. So well, you've got to give the people what they want. Okay, you've got to yeah. give the people what they want. The, it's like this, basically this, porn by the sounds of it. <laughs> there's, there's so many. What sort of fucking... porn are you watching, Adrian? Holy shit! <laughs> Damn. Well, like Jess, Jesse's like, well, you know, every now and then there'll just be a guy standing there just with his penis <laughs> out. You know, well, no, they just they won't just be standing there with their, with their penis out. But um, there's like so much with dick balls involved. In the... Seriously, no, no, not not with balls. But there's so much <laughs> dick in this movie. Like there was a bit of penis in like the first three jackasses, but this one is like. <laughs> Takes it to eleven. It's it's primarily, of course, Chris Pontius. Um, but course, then there's a couple of yeah. a couple of other guys as well. Like the first skit is uh, Chris Pontius's penis dressed up as Godzilla, and uh, <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, He's uh he's wrecking like a miniature town set that they've superimposed all the Jackass crew members in. So Johnny Aww. Knoxville, Johnny Knoxville is playing like a general who's leading like uh, these soldiers to defeat the penis Godzilla <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> so incredible, must watch. Mm. Like I said, mm. it's probably going to win an Oscar. But yeah, Snubbed a lot of if it, a if lot it of, doesn't, doesn't. <laughs> a lot of penis. And there's a lot of gross. There's, there's a fair bit of gross stuff in here as well. I'll, oh yeah, and one, I'll say one more thing. Aaron, um, you know Aaron, Danger Aaron, uh, he by far gets the worst shit in this movie. Like this, the, the shit he does compared to the other guys, they just put him through the worst shit. And uh, if you ever see the movie, Matt, or, you know, the listeners, you, you'll understand what I mean. Like he always just seems to get picked for the to do just the worst, terrible, most insane crap this movie. So, yeah, but yeah it was great. Good movie. Well, Enjoyed it. Last question before we move on. Um, do they address the, the BAM issue at all? Like, I'm, I know no. he said it. Is he in it much? So, so he is literally, there's one skit where they're all dressed up in like musicians, musician outfits. I can't remember what the, na- the specific name is. And they're all playing like, you know, the saxophone or the oboe or the, the, the flute. Or, they're all playing different instruments. And then like there's this treadmill uh, near them that's going like, 100 miles an hour and what they're doing this plant walking they're doing like a marching band kind of thing and they're walking onto the treadmill and just getting flung into this wall <laughs> and they completely fucked themselves up like steve broke his collarbone in it or something like that oh, um shit. bam bam is in that skit uh and it's the only skit in the movie he's in and it's kind of almost like a blink and you'll miss it him Fuck. like, the, like it, when they're walking up he's sort of in the middle of the, the group so you don't really see him and then you see him like for like literally a second getting flung into the wall um and then that's it you don't see him for the rest of the movie so he's literally you'll see him for like two seconds and that's it yeah. and wow. you really some most people most people will miss him most people like will say that he wasn't in the movie he was in the movie but it's just like for one second and he's credited as well so snap mm. well at least they credit him yeah uh moving on to the next um i saw don't breathe two this was all the way yes. back in i think it was like august last year um, Whoa. We were going to cover this in our first episode, I believe, but uh, we had Shang-Chi and a bunch of other big stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but look, uh, I'll save you guys the trouble. Um, Don't Breathe 1 is a freaking modern classic, in my opinion. It is an incredible film. Uh, but as I have alluded to in previous episodes, Don't Breathe 2 uh, is whack. It is, it is trash. so <laughs> trash. It's yeah. unbelievable how... They fuck this up on such a basic level. It's the concept. Oh. The concept is terrible. Like in my opinion, because what they do is they try and turn him into an anti-hero. Like they try and make him a good guy. And that's uh, so just what the yeah, hell are they thinking? Um, Ad and I actually talked about this previously, and funnily enough, another test episode before we launched uh, the podcast, we did a test episode where we talked about the trailer. 
and Adrian had a theory like, oh, well, maybe they'll take the perspective of this young girl he's taken care of and reveal he's a monster. That would be a pretty good way. And I was like, yeah, that'd be a, that would be a great way to do it, you know? Unfortunately, no. Um, he, he's the main character. Um, basically, he's – it's weird. It, it doesn't feel like Don't Breathe 2. It feels like Don't Breathe 3 or 4 because – in between the first movie, which, rem- reminding you, it ends with him attempting to forcibly impregnate a woman, uh, making mm-hmm. him possibly the most unlikable character ever. It's 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 been so long since I've watched it. Uh, it's, it's, it the ending is disgusting. I really don't like it. makes me uncomfortable. But um, this, between the first and second one, apparently there's a house that's just burning down and this girl's inside just going to die. He comes along, I think, saves her and then raises her as his own and sort of like, and then basically these these robbers or something go break into his house and he has to protect the house and protect the girl because they want the girl because I think one of them mm. is like... Yeah, I'm already not like this. ...abusive dad or something like that. It's always about abuse with this. But anyways, it just feels weird because... And like the, the director is kind of like, yeah, you're not meant to like him. He's an unlikable protagonist. But he's still unlikable. And on top of that, like there's less of the whole quiet place stuff where everyone has to be quiet and you have to like not breathe um to like so you can hide from him because he's, he's blind and he, um, he goes up sensories there is one amazing scene though where what do you do he oh this is what he does it's it's kind of fucked up there's a guy in like his garage and sneaks behind him and super glues his lips together and the guy is like, oh, he actually survives it, but he has to like pretty much rip his face off oh. to, to get rid of it. And it's yeah. really fucked up. Like, that's a cool kill. Has he never heard kill. of hot water? <laughs> Apparently not. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 I can see where they're trying to go, but I just don't think this is the character you do that with. I think it just would have yeah. been so much better if you continued it being a slasher movie and have him kill. Like at moments, it does feel like the original, but they're just small moments, and it's just such a weird place to take this character. Um, I think just in this generation now of filmmakers, studios want franchises, and these directors, I think, uh, sorry, director and writers, um, I, I applaud them because they got balls. They're like, how do we make a franchise out of this? And most. Mm. horror franchises they just have a killer kill new people every movie and it's repetitive and stale and old so and usually you want to root for the guy to kill the people anyways because you're there for the kills so i get where they might have been trying to come from and i applaud them for trying something different but it doesn't work you just can't have a guy pretty much try and um r-a-p-e someone and then in the next movie make him the good guy i'm sorry just no no thank you sorry we're closed Mine. And uh, that's what I think about Don't Breathe 2. I, I don't want them to do a Don't Breathe 3 unless they return <laughs> to the original form. And yeah, uh, moving on though, we're going we're gonna to go back to, we'll go back to Adrienne uh, for another film you saw recently, Aidy. You saw yes. West Side Story. Oh, maybe we should I save did. this for a normal episode. Actually, let me ask we... you real quick. Would you, rather, would you rather cover West Side Story or Night, or Old, or Old? Or Night Teeth. You can pick one of them. Actually, time. Night Teeth, Night Teeth. Okay. I'd rather so do that save, if I was going to save it. Yeah, we're going to save yeah. West Side Story for a, for a real episode. And <laughs> Adrian <laughs> talked to us about Night Teeth, which I have no mm. idea what – is that is that a show or a movie? So it's a movie. It's a Netflix original and it's a vampire movie. Um, right. I love vampire movies, all about them. And this trailer – sucked me right in uh, pun intended um and Uh, it was really (laughs) really good the cinematography in this film by the way if you're all about visuals this is a feast for the eyes uh basically i'll give you like the rundown of what it's about so uh, a college student moonlighting as a chauffeur picks up two mysterious women for a night of party hopping across LA. However, when he uncovers their bloodthirsty intentions and their dangerous shadowy underworld, he has to fight to stay alive. He sort of gets caught up like accidentally in a vampire mafia ring. And it is so good. Um, the cast, you'd know them from, 
I don't know, sort of random things like Debbie Ryan, who's the the main vampire. She's of Disney Channel fame, but she's so ferocious and just just a bad bitch in this movie. Um, Lucy Fry is the other vampire and she does an amazing job too. I, she's also Australian actually. So Aussie's representing, really cool. Um, but they are just, yeah, their chemistry is amazing. They're really dark vampires. It's gory. They don't hold back with the violence at all. But it's also funny. Like it's sort of a rom-com at the maybe at a, a couple layers down. Like that would be a part of the story for sure because the driver who gets caught up in it falls in love with Blair who's one of the main vampires. So uh, you've also got like Alfie Allen who was in Game of Thrones in it. He plays oh. the like head of the mafia who's a total asshole. He's so good at playing dicks. Um, and then, yeah, Megan Fox is in it for a little bit as is Sydney Sweeney from Euphoria. So it's a really cool cast um, and the director did an amazing job. I think that the pacing was really, really good. Um, you're on the ride the entire time. There's there's no moments where you're bored, not even for a second. Dope. Mm. Um, yeah. And this also stars Alfie Allen, who was the bad guy from the first John Wick. Oh, he's also the yes. Andre Joy. But- yeah, Adrian, Adrian yes. just, just said that. <laughs> Oh, sorry, yeah, he sorry. Was, he was I took actually, my headphones off for one second, uh, and that's what I missed. He was actually that's probably fine. my favourite my favorite on or one of my favorites on Game of Thrones. Yeah, me, me too. Me too. He really um like he had such really, a good arc oh, for Game of Thrones. He did. He but then so uh, did. we don't want to happen with Game of Thrones. We don't talk about well, that. Um. <laughs> actually, well, let me ask you something because we actually we we got a Do you really think it's fair that we judge Game of Thrones by its final season? Because it gave yes. us at least four or five of the best seasons of television ever. But all we do but, is talk about how bad the final season was. We right? dedicated I, years I, of our lives waiting for that moment and they stripped it from us. They well, took I, it away. I, I, I'd even say it's like dedicating our lives. Like I'd even say it's like you can't you can't really watch it again now. You can't you can't enjoy those first few seasons because you know it doesn't coming. complete it doesn't complete the whole series. You have to watch all of it. You know, because that's it's it's complete that way. And it's like are we, are we actually going to go into this? Because it's like if they didn't want to like, – I know they didn't want to do the last – like they were over it. They just wanted to quickly wrap up the last season and do other projects because they had a Star Wars project dangling in front of them. and but Which it's like, they lost because of the failure yeah. of the final yeah. season. And um, but it's like, dude, just, you know, even if, you, if you're going to end it on season eight, fair enough, but at least give it a bit more breathing room and – just, just the maybe hour and, and a half episodes or something. Well, just like I, fill it up. I get it because, um, like the point when you're writing a story, like okay, even uh, take a television writing, right? They don't write, write a script. They have a writer's room, and they'll spend at least three days trying to break a story. Just come up with bullet points on that, mm. and then you write. You know, um, you got to know your ending before you can really do much of the story. The whole point of the journey to get to destination is not to get to is, is to get to destination. So if you're setting up all these things with terrible payoff, or if you're, it kind of makes, it does feel everything else before it redundant. Um, and it's the shame when I feel like a show can be ruined by one episode, you know, like mm, for example, for me, for me, like a lot of people say, well, Scrubs is, you know, the season nine was bad. But I'm like, no, but, the, th- the real finale was in season eight. So I still think Scrubs is a good show. I they wrap in season, season eight? Uh, sorry? Do they wrap it in season eight? Like, did they, they have like they a finale? It. So what okay. happened was they were meant to end in season six, but then there was the writers. So sorry, and season seven was meant to be the final season. Season seven of Scrubs was meant to be the final season, but then there was a writer's strike. So they had to cut it in half. And they were going, that's fine. We'll just continue it next season. But NBC at the time was like, no, um, we only contracted you for a season seven. You're done. So they sold the show to ABC who were like, we'll happily give you a final season. So they make season eight, which is one of the best seasons ever of Scrubs. It feels like season one all over again, but with like all the extra stuff. And it's amazing season. Has the most incredible emotional finale ever, which is so true to the show. 
and it really ties in. It closes all these other plot lines and running gags and stuff. And then ABC go, we know we said we just won season eight, but technically we've got you all on a contract. It did so well. It did way better than we expected. So now we want a season nine. And Bill Lawrence, oh, the showrunner, was no. like, I, I just closed every storyline. We're actually knocking down the sets. We can't. They're like, we don't care. Make a season nine somehow. So then he tried to make a spinoff show called Scrubs MD, but they're like, no, it has to be called Scrubs. So then in season nine, it's called Scrubs and small writing says MD. Uh, sorry, sorry. No, sorry. Medical school. Sorry. Scrubs medical school underneath. And they try and like shit. They get the old cast in to sort of like pass the torch to a new generation, but it's, no. It's not the same and you know, it's got it's uh it's it's what gave the world Dave Franco. Um mm-hmm. it, you know, but yeah, it wasn't great. But I also look at How I Met Your Mother. I love I love the finale, but a lot of people hate it mm-hmm. and they say the show's ruined for that, but I like it. But yeah. Let's Me- Yeah. Sorry, go on, go on. I was just gonna say, like with Game of Thrones, it was twenty eleven to twenty nineteen. You've nearly you know, like spent a decade same as Scrubs of your life, waiting, falling in love with these characters. So, you know, handle with care. Just handle with care. That's true. That's true. What I like um, How Much Your Mother is they actually filmed scenes for the last episode all the way back in season two. So, like, they had it planned. Yeah. If you watch the final episode, like, so you know how the whole plot device is him telling the mm-hmm. story to his kids. Well, yeah. They, they oh, ran, yeah, that's right. They stopped doing that in season two. They stopped cutting back to the kids. But in the final episode, they cut back to the kids. And it's like the, at that point, I think they'd gone from stand definition to high definition. So like the footage even looks different. And they have, <laughs> well, they have like a modern day um, act footage intercut with that. But it's really great. And it's good to know that they, they planned it out from the start. But uh, look, look, we are off topic. Um, and we're trying to do a short one today, so let's move on to another topic. Um, Jesse, you saw Rap yes. of Man starring uh, Jason Statham. Jason Statham. Jason everything with this. Yes. <laughs> yes. Jason Statham. Like, every gravelly voice. <laughs> Very gravelly. Um, and it's, yes. it's Guy Ritchie directing, right? Uh, yes, yes. It's Guy Ritchie's directing. And I saw this, fuck, I saw this like months and months ago. Um, and I saw it was my dad. He's like, hey, this movie's on. And I was like, doing nothing. I was like, I've, I've got no life. I've got no social life. Let's do it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was okay. I mean, with Jason Statham action movies, it's almost like you've seen one, you've seen them all. And it was good. I, I, I don't remember much about it. Um, there was... A great scene. The, the it's it's about um uh the this group of um I'm trying to remember what it was. It was, it was so long ago since oh, I saw it. I've got on he, IMDb he, here. I'll, I'll read the um. Yeah. Have you the, seen it? Eighty years. Yeah, I saw it in the cinema as well. Oh, I didn't realize you both said. Okay, great. Yeah. We have a bit of conversation. But I'll, how about I read the um mm, the synopsis and then you guys can take it from there. Um, the plot follows H, a cold and mysterious character working at a cash truck company responsible for moving hundreds of millions of dollars That's around right. Los yeah. Angeles every week, each week. And if I remember correctly from the trailer, refresh my memory here, he's, is it something like he's, he's protecting these van, these, these trucks of cash to find someone who killed somebody? Or, yes. It seems yes. super convoluted from the trailer alone. It's, That's yeah. pretty it's his, spot on. It's his um, son, I think, from memory. And yeah. um, th- there's these group of guys that are stealing all this cash, like they still cash from this um, truck from at the very opening scene, um, which shuts up the entire movie. And then they um, they go and rob. They go to the police station. There's this, the the one scene I do remember is they go to the police station at the very end and uh, get into like a gunfight with the with the police, and they're wearing all this like riot gear. And it's probably the best scene in the whole movie. That that like that last part, the first yeah. part, the first half, I was a bit in and out. I wasn't really tuning into it much. I was a bit bored. But um, the the, the final act 
where they're in the police station in a gunfight with the, with the cops. That, that was, was really, really good. I will say one thing, though, which sort of annoyed me a little bit is the fact that they were using numbers to identify themselves. And I made a film with a bunch of criminals who use numbers to identify themselves. And I was like <laughs> thinking, can I sue here? Um, <laughs> I, 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 you can try, but I don't think you'll have much luck. But uh, <laughs> uh, Numbers Claim, available now on, was it Amazon or something? Amazon and Ozflix. Amazon and um, uh, Yeah, it was, it was all right. It was, it was a fun popcorn flick. Jason Statham was fine. He was being his Jason Statham-ness. And uh, it, was, it was largely forgettable except for that final act. That final gunfight was really well done. And I really enjoyed that final like gunfight slash escape uh, ending. It was really well done. Um, but, yeah, fun popcorn flick. I don't know. What, AD, what did you okay. think? Well, ladies and gentlemen, when we describe a film as forgettable, this is what we're talking about because you can tell Jesse's really struggling here. <laughs> no, well, what I mean, okay, so, so there's two so types. Just, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, there's two types of forgettable. There's a forgettable where it's where it's it was so bad the whole thing was forgettable, and then there's the forgettable where it's eh, it's all right to kill time on a Sunday. It's not a great movie, not a terrible movie. It's just mediocre, mm. uh, but it's forgettable in the sense that I probably won't remember it. Yeah, in a day or yeah. two's time. Hence, why I'm struggling to recall now exactly. what actually happened in the in the fucking movie. So yeah, it was just mediocre. It was just okay. That's what, um, that's what I meant. That's what I'm trying to express. Yeah, yeah. what I'm saying. Anyway, I'll shut up now. So it's. How do you go? I reckon I agree with um with you for the most part. The first two acts are a lot to get through. There's lots of uh, plot and character building. And it can feel very slow, but then in that third act, it it is kind of insane, but in a really good way. So the payoff is good if you're if you can manage to sit. It is quite long as well from memory, but if you manage to sit through the whole thing, the ending is really good. The action's good. That's like the fighting you've been waiting for. That whole two hours, and when it comes, it's excellent. Um, I like that. That was the first uh, movie that Guy Ritchie brought Josh Hartnett in for, and he's now I'm pretty sure just going to be in like all of his movies in the future, um, which I'm really happy about. I actually wished he had a bigger role in the movie. Because he kind of Um, disappeared, didn't he? He he disappeared. He sort of did. He was just, I don't know, a bit of a filler character, but um, it was good. I do love Jason's genuine um want for revenge i feel like even if he's playing the same sort of person he does bring that across really well and you're always on his side and like you're rooting for him um what happened to his character is really tragic so from the Mm. get-go i was pretty connected and i was on his side but yeah it wasn't my fave guy Ritchie one like you said not bad at all it's just a bit long i think the trailer makes it look like it's going to be action t- like the whole time but it's not oh what well, there was a lot of action though especially towards the second half but yeah, it's, yeah. I, I was bored the first half i'm not gonna yeah, lie yeah it, it can be but a bit of a dip for the first there was a, i just i just remembered there was there was a really really weird scene where post malone turns up for like yeah two minutes oh my god i remember that and, <laughs> and i was like what the fuck Post Malone just turns up for literally two minutes and Jason Statham just shoots him. It was the weirdest, yeah. Fucking, yeah. It was the weirdest fucking thing. I think post, so post, cool. I'm interested to see Post Malone get more active because he was also in um, Spencer Confidential. Mm, and, yes. Uh, playing a, and it just, it's because the tats are so, the tattoos yeah. are so recognisable. It's like he's very limited to the roles he can play, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he's also, his personality contradicts contradicts his look so much because he's such a <laughs> bubbly happy guy he but is. like but hollywood has programmed us to think if the guy's got tattoos he's going to be serious and really dangerous yeah and that's i guess that's fine but um yeah it's just it's it's funny but i'm also happy to see that nowadays tattoos are becoming more normalized you see cults with tattoos more celebrities are getting tattoos um mm. All for it. It's not just musicians, man. Uh, but look, we're doing great for time, actually. So I'm, I'm going to allow to squeeze one more in here that we weren't yep. going to. 
Um, Adrian, would you like to talk about Old, directed by M. Night Shyamalan? Sure. What a twist. With yeah. a twist. Um, you saw it too, Matt, didn't you? Um, I was going to, and then I, I wasn't able to. You going to. Which is the story of my life. Um, it's I on know, streaming right? now, though, so I'd love to see it. I was, I was actually going to the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I think this was one of his best ones for quite a while. It's not even, like, mind-blowing with its plot or anything, but the acting is really good. Um, he must have, I don't know, he got he got amazing performances out of his cast and the, the intrigue is really strong for the first half, but then I think it's, I don't know, it unravels itself in a way that, you're not like, what the hell? Um, there is, though, at the very, very end, there's an element to the twist that you don't expect. And it's not a shock value. It's more of an um, like a philosophical point of view where you go, okay, this happened, which was really, really fucked up, but there was sort of like a good reason behind it originally, which you don't expect. Um, I don't want to spoil it because if you do watch it, I think it's very thought provoking. And I think that, I think it was an excellent commentary. You can interpret it in as many ways as you like. Um, The way that I took it, I was like, okay, like interesting. Like what are humans willing to do in the name of science, right? Like how far is too far? Like how much is too much? Um, And that's left open for you to see. But it actually, there are really some really sad, highly emotional parts of the film that I, I suppose I wasn't expecting to feel that much during. But it was good. And it's all in the one location, so you sort of feel like you've been living on the island as well for the whole movie, like with mm. these people. I don't know. It depends how emotionally attached you get, but you sort of feel like, oh, my God, I want to get off. But you're not even, you know, you're just watching the movie. Yeah. Um, but it was really good. I thought he did great with this. I don't – I genuinely don't really see any criticism about it. I remember – still thinking about it a few days later, just about the message. So that for me was was really, really well done. I think it got mixed reviews, didn't it? Old? Yeah, it yeah, got it got reviews. very mixed reviews. Yeah. Is it, which, is, um, which is better than terrible reviews, which is also just a game. Uh, yeah. But I think that's, yeah. that's, that's, the, that's the thing about M. Night Shyamalan. A lot of his concepts, they're, they're very like Stephen King-esque. Like they're very out there. They're pretty bizarre like, what if this was a thing and then mm. uh, and then like now that he's, he's dug himself in a hole where we expect a big twist and yeah. that can either make or break the film um uh, and so mm. sometimes it's a slam dunk i say slam dunk while hitting a home run <laughs> <laughs> or it could be it could be a miss um and that's the thing but i, I feel like his last few films like he has been bouncing back so so good mm. on him Guys, yeah. I'd like to, I, have, I've spent, I have a bit of inspiration right now. We're going to play a little game. Um, okay. I'm going to call it Bangers or Mash. Um, it's like <laughs> what or not, but we, it's the question is, is it a banger? We're going to go through okay. a bunch of M. Night Shyamalan films, and I just want to hear quickly from you guys, is it a banger or is it what, mash? What if we haven't seen them? Uh, if you haven't seen them, just say pass. Okay? Okay. Ready? Okay. I haven't seen many. Uh, or, or you can go off... Um, public reception to your knowledge okay 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 so if you haven't seen it but everyone calls it trash you can just say mash okay mm-hmm. all right so all i'm right, gonna start i'm not gonna start from the start i'm gonna start from his big breakout hit the sixth sense banger or mash banger 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 nothing from jesse nothing Pass. You can just say, okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. We'll do this quick. Um, oh, man. I would say you get mad if you're not saying Godfather. Not, okay. That's, okay. that's, that's actually very Mate, surprising, Mate, you can't Jesse. compare that's the Godfather with Sixth Sense, really. But you, the, you, okay. okay s- Culturally, Sixth Sense is a pretty big deal. It's a pretty, a pretty big deal. It, it, made, it made plot twists cool. It made okay, plot twists okay, cool. It actually It's did. not the same, but yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. But right. I'll follow okay. into that Unbreakable, Banger or Mash. 
Oh, I haven't seen it, so I have to I haven't seen it either, pass. Personally, I have not seen it either, but I know it's a banger from everyone. I've heard it's a banger, yeah. And also, I've weirdly seen its sequel, so... (laughs) Yeah, me too, Um, actually. uh, uh, Now we get into, like, middling territory. Signs. Oh, banger. banger. Absolute banger. banger. One of my all-time favourites. All right. The Village. I haven't seen it. Uh, Yeah, Absolute watery mash. I, um, I think if I remember correctly, the twist is you think they're in like this olden day times and then she like leaves the village and finds out it's modern day. Yeah. <laughs> Been there. Okay. That was so, such a waste of time. Um, Lady in the Water. I haven't seen it. Mm, I remember that being a bit mash. Uh, to be yeah, honest. It's, it's one of his most panned films. I'm going to say mash. Uh, yeah. The Happening. Mash. Mash. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm going to say it's what's in the middle, uh, peas, oh. peas oh. and potatoes. Peas? I don't know. I feel like really? I, I remember seeing it in the theatre and I enjoyed the concept of everyone's just cool dying concept. and killing themselves. And it was a bit funny and I don't know if it was meant to be funny. It's like the, there's the one where like the guy like, has like that giant lawnmower and he just lays down in front of it. Yeah, I remember that. Oh That's so God. fucking But there's that Jesus. scene, but there's that one scene which is just so memorable where I think it's, is it Mark Wahlberg? I think it is. Um, yeah, it and he's is. Like, and he's like, they figure out it's like the plants. And he, so he starts talking to a plant. It's like, hey, I don't want you to kill me. Da-da-da. And he touches plastic. <laughs> like, oh, no. Nah. Um, <gasps> no. But yeah, I, I, think, um, I, think, I think Mark Wahlberg famously hated Yeah, he does. Movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's definitely mash, but I feel like I had some moments of okayness. Um, but I stress okayness, not goodness. Okay. <laughs> Um, the last Airbender, uh, Mash is. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it either, Mash, but it's one I, of his most hated films. I know it's that much. not good. Um, I've seen good. clips, and I remember finding even like the little two minute clips on YouTube boring. Yeah, uh, this is. No. I was meant to go through this faster. It's okay. Um, After Earth, I haven't seen it, but I'm going to say Mash. Mash, 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 absolutely Mash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Unfortunately, uh, I have seen it. I think um, Jaden. I think Will was hoping that would be the thing that blows up Jaden Smith, but uh, no. He at the time he was not an icon living. Uh, moving, <laughs> moving on to the visit. I have not. S- oh no, no, no! I have seen the visit. Um, yeah, I've it was seen bash. it. No, uh, I think it's a banger. I like the visit. I really like the. I think it's um apparently. Every cent he made from After Earth just went to fund the visit, and okay. he shot it with a bunch of like unknowns. Look, it's it's a little weird That's at times. Cool. It's not on the same level as the Sixth Sense and Signs and Unbreakable, but it's all it's right. for a, for a low budget film, mm. and, and 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 compared to all of his other shittier films, it is a lot better. In fairness, I'll say it's mashed but with some gravy. Okay, okay. like there's some good parts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like this in the game. Um, split. Uh, banger, banger, but I, I banger. hated the ending. Uh, I did not like the ending at all. It was a bit was far-fetched, trash. wasn't it? Yeah. It but was I, very far-fetched. I, I I liked the whole movie and then the ending happened. I'm like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not digging this at all. So, But I'll still say it's a banger. Yeah, yeah. I think amazing uh, performance by, uh, what's his name? Is Anya Taylor-Joy. Oh, James oh. McAvoy. Oh, yeah, Anya taylor yeah, also good. But, yeah, he's just, he owns that. Uh, follow up with the sequel, Glass, which is also a sequel to Unbreakable, uh, Glass. <laughs> Have you guys seen that? I haven't seen it. Ah, uh, like. Oh, I know the movie, but I haven't I seen it. Go. For me, it's, uh, I suppose it's, yeah, it's MASH, but. I think you could uh, you could just tell that he's got like a medium budget and he's really yeah. struggling to pay the actors like because Sam Jackson and uh, Bruce Willis cost so much and so yeah, he's kind of split into three especially parts. Bruce Willis yeah and, and but you know what uh, the what so while it is not a it's not a great film but it was nice to see Bruce Willis try for once like there are some scenes where it's like <laughs> oh that's right. He's good at acting. I forgot, like, because yeah. he does so much shit. Yeah. And um, it's it's the last <laughs> decent role. It's the last good performance I've seen from Bruce Willis. Um, and now okay. he has his own Razzie's category. Uh, so, yeah. Yes. And then, so, finally, uh, Adrienne Old, is it a banger or mash? You know what? I'm going to say it was a banger because 
more than more than like the shock value, it actually genuinely left me affected on an emotional level. And I thought it was really intelligent. So banger, banger. There we go. And that's our first episode of Banger or Mash. Bangers and Mash. <laughs> Bangers and Mash. Um, I, I, like I came that. up with that concept on the spot too. It's like a, well, it's another well hot Well done. It's pretty good. Pretty I like good. that even though I hadn't seen like 90% of his filmography. <laughs> I, 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 I enjoyed that. You might have to do that with some more directors as they come up. Yes. Uh, let's move on. How are we doing for time? It is, oh, okay. We're doing okay. Um, real quick, I'm going to talk about Home Sweet Home Alone, which we didn't cover mm-hmm. on the podcast. Um, you know what? I'm just going to pull it up on IMDb real quick. Home Sweet Home Alone um, is on Disney+. Plus. came out around Christmas time last year, and it stars the, um, the cute kid from um, – the, so the cute supporting kid from Taika Waititi's Nazi movie called Jojo Rabbit. Yes. Um, and he's he's adorable as fuck. Um, and it's written by, and I was really excited for it because it was written by um, Mikey Day and Strita Seidel of, um, of Saturday Night Live fame. And Strita Seidel I've been following since he worked at College Humor. So I was very excited. Ah. Um, cool. I, I love the cast. I, I was really excited for the cast because uh, an act, a comedian, a comedian I really like called Pete Holmes, um, played a character, but he was barely in the movie. So oh <laughs> it no! Sucks. But um, the 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 thing that makes this Home Alone first of all, I just want to say, um, in my household is a Home Alone household. We've seen all of them, including the director DVD ones, and I would say this is. Of all the director de- director video ones, this is the best. Um, it's still not as good as Home Alone one, two, or three. I would say this is the fourth best Home Alone. How, many, how many are there? I think there like are. Five? I think this is six. This is number six. This is six. Yeah, yeah. So I you're remember. Saying this, you're saying this is the fourth best. This is the fourth four four out of six. Yeah. Four if out I had to six. Ra- okay, real quick, I'll rank all the Home Alone. That still Alones. doesn't sound like a great ra- great ranking. Yeah, but like four, two of four but, out of six. But I, but the two of them are considered two of the best family movies of all time, and I would yes. say the third one is really close in in quality. It's not as good as the first two, but I think it's super underrated. But I think it's really close. Um, if I had to rank all six Home Alones, I would say it goes two, one. Oh, I think it's one, two. No, no, no. Two, one, three. Home Sweet Home Alone. Home Alone Five. Home Alone. Four. Yeah, four is definitely the worst. Um, and, and it's weird. And five is weird because they have Kellen McAllister return, but it's played by a different actor who looks nothing that's... like Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, that's yeah, weird. It's a whole thing. But look, Home Sweet Home Alone. Um, this one, they try to do something different where they try and make you. So, so the, the people breaking in is played by Ellie Kemper, um, who is an amazing um, actress. You know, you've seen her in. Um, uh, the Office and yes. and uh, what's the Netflix one? Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. And then um, it's also Rob Delaney, who is just a really great physical um, physical actor. You know, he, he was in Deadpool 2 as, as Peter with the, the mustache. And, mm. um, but what happens is, I think, if I remember correctly, uh, they've left something in the house or something and they have to break in to get it. And you, and like they've got trouble with their bills and all that. They're not like burglars, like 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 cat burglars. And what the problem with that is, when this kid starts fucking them up and he fucks <laughs> them up, I, I start feeling sorry for them. So, oh becomes, my god, it's that intense. Yeah, well, it's it's because they have good intentions. Like they actually are like oh. they actually sit down. They talk about the ethics of we're going to war against a child, you know, like we, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. And it's like, yeah, you shouldn't be. But um, it's not like all the, all the other five, it's like, oh, these are the bad guys. These, they, and they're actually likable. They're, they're likable people. So when they start trying to break into this house and this kid's fucking them up, I feel like, oh no, if they don't break in, they're going to lose their own house. So That's an interesting take. I actually think that sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a nice take, and it makes sense because well, it's hard to lead a film with a child, I guess. And um, I think he could have done it though. Arch, Archie Yates, his name is, he's great, and he's 
He was really cute. And that's what you need in one of these movies. You need a mm. cute lead kid. Um, they also try and tie it into the original two movies by um, Buzz McAllister returns as a as a cop, um, and he talks about his 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 brother who was left ho- home alone a few times. And that's um, hilarious. And the reason the cops never go to the house is because he thinks he tells the cops not to show up because he thinks it's his brother playing a prank on him. Because his uh. brother, because now that he's a cop, he always pranks saying that yeah. And apparently McAllister also runs a security company, a home security company now. Oh, oh my wow. God, I of love course. that. Yeah, but Macaulay Culkin isn't in the film, but it's yeah. nice that they made an attempt to give us some Easter eggs and stuff. So they like referenced him. Yeah, they, they referenced him. They have his brother. Like the actor actually returns. He's all grown up now. Um, and oh, yeah, I love so, that. That's so, so cool. You know, I like that they tried. This does, unlike the other two, like four and five, this doesn't feel like they just – they just shitted it out. Um, <laughs> and they, they actually tried. Yeah. And, and and I just want to defend again, Home Alone 3, a lot of people give it shit, but it has the same writer. It had the, the editor of the first two directed the third one. And mm-hmm. a lot of the behind the scene crew was the same. So like, I highly recommend, if anything though, Home Alone 3. It's not as bad as people remember. I uh, highly recommend. <laughs> but Home Street Home Alone, like, I don't know, if you've got kids maybe, but not unless you're a okay. hardcore fan. Of the, of the franchise and that's it for us today here at upcoming attractions um we've gone through quite a few of the list here and I've, I've had a good time hope you guys have a good time too hopefully fingers crossed hopefully um this episode is released and if all things go to plan uh we might get our episodes out a bit more uh frequently hopefully because we have a lot of we have a lot of problems in the back end with our with our stuff so hopefully this new system works for us Anyways, I'm Matt, that's Adrian and Jesse. If you'd like to hear more from upcoming attractions, uh, be sure to check us out on social media. Um, be sure to check the highlights on TikTok, uh, the clips on YouTube, the full episodes on YouTube. Listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, wherever. Please give us an iTunes five-star review. really helps the show, and we love you all. Mwah, mwah, mwah. That's it for us today. Until next time, laters. Bye, guys. See you later. Bye.